you know, it was really pedestrian work in terms of like, okay, we take a probe and we send it down and we see what the water's like next to this cannon. Um, but it was everything surrounding that work that was really interesting. And you could tell that everybody who was there was really passionate about what they did. You know, they were all volunteers. I think there was only one individual who was getting paid. Um, and so everybody was there because they wanted to be there. And to get to work with a whole bunch of passionate people from um, walks of life that I don't get to interact with. You know, I don't know any historians. I don't know really any divers or anything like that. And to get to work with these world-class historians and these world-class researchers from all across the world um, was very cool. And, you know, to sit at the same table with them as the guy from the USGS, you know, with my high-vis jacket and my expensive equipment, that kind of stuff, it felt cool and I, it felt very legit. Um, even if the job itself was, you know, pretty simple in terms of what we normally do. Um, the reach that the job had in that specific situation, um, I felt was really unique. Uh, so I'm Alexander Bissell. I work at the New England uh, Water Science Center. I'm a hydrologic technician for the water quality section. I first started with the USGS uh, as a pathways intern um, working for the surveying section uh, doing FEMA flood mapping. Um, it was a really amazing opportunity um, in terms of an internship to be able to come into this world-class scientific organization as, you know, somebody who knew next to nothing about science or environmental science um, and learn on the job and, and learn the basics of um, surveying and of map making and uh, get to travel around New England as a whole and, and go into wetlands and places that you'd never really get to go. However, whenever I had the chance, uh, when I wasn't out in the field, I would go around to the other projects in the mass office and just pester them and be like, hey, is there anything I can help with? Like, do you need somebody to come out in the field? Do you need somebody to wash dishes in the lab? And, um, so I was able to meet some really cool people and work on some other projects um, while I was still an intern. And because of the experiences I had as an intern outside of the FEMA mapping program, I, I kind of knew that water quality was where I wanted to be. Um, doing the lab work and doing the sort of analysis work was really, really intriguing to me. Um, and so I don't know if it was luck or what, but when I was graduating, there just happened to be a, you know, GS5 hydrotech position that opened up in the water quality section. So I work in water quality, which is kind of based all around uh, continuous water quality uh, monitoring year after year at the same sites to kind of get comparative data um, for, you know, states and local governments. And so it consists a lot of um, going out and collecting discrete samples, sending them into the lab to get analyzed, figuring out nutrient loads, dissolved organic carbon, that sort of stuff. Things that, you know, uh, key us into how good the water is in a discrete location. So I think probably the most amazing experience I've had with the USGS was uh, getting to work with the Rhode Island Maritime Archaeological Project. Um, it is a nonprofit group based out of Newport, um, and they brought me out onto their research vessel to help them get kind of water quality data surrounding a shipwreck uh, that they think might be the HMS Endeavor, which was Captain Cook's ship that he used to circumnavigate the world. Uh, the USGS was getting water column data, and so uh, basically I gave a water quality sonde to a diver, and they brought it around to various um, important points around the wreck to figure out kind of uh, the quality of water and, and what the water was like around the wreck. Um, they're able to use that data to make like storage tanks for when you bring a artifact up, you can put it in water that's similar to the water that it was in before so that it doesn't degrade further. Um, and so just by using, you know, really kind of basic water quality techniques and the equipment that we use every day, um, they were able to really set apart their research. Um, not many nautical archaeology projects have that sort of water quality data, um, and they especially don't have it in a comparative sense year after year. And so to be able to 
do a couple of years of data collection for them has been really awesome. For somebody who's interested in the USGS, I would say if you're still in college or in education, the Pathways internship is, is definitely the way to go. Um, making a little bit of money while you're in college and then also getting your foot in the door is just invaluable. Um, a, a lot of the scientists that I know and that I work with every day started as interns. Um, and so it's a, you know, I, I really can't praise the program enough. Um, in terms of people who want to work for the federal government as a whole uh, in the USGS specifically, you know, just send out applications, send out a lot of applications, uh, use the USA Jobs resume builder and, you know, build your network and just keep trying. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure everybody has a story about how they got hired and there's no one pathway, um, pun intended. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to get in here, but it's definitely worth it to try. And uh, even if it's not something that you can see yourself doing for the rest of your life, you know, just getting your foot in the door, I feel is so important. And then you can kind of forge your own path uh, once you're in.